The Connection Show, inspiring hope, health, and healing, sponsored by Braveheart Workshops Live with Jill Reynolds. And I'm in New York at the Reawaken America Conference with Clay Clark and General Flynn. And I'm in the media room and just ran into the amazing, amazing, amazing Lisa Hill. Welcome, Lisa, to the show. Thank you so much, Jill. I'm honored to be here. Well, I'd like to, to I'm going to bring you over a little closer so yep. you're in the screen better. There we go. Um, Lisa, I love to hear people's story, and so does our audience. So if you're willing, would you take us back into your childhood to little Lisa growing up and share with us what your family life was, what it was like in grammar school, junior high and high school, and any highlights you'd like to share about your life? Thank you so much. My story is very, very uninteresting, I would say, in my childhood. I was brought up near Detroit, Michigan, and I had an amazing father who was not only the police captain, but he also was a pastor. So we would always joke about being raised by the law and the gospel, right? (laughs) And I'm the oldest of six. My mom was amazing, you know, a stay-at-home mom. So I grew up, and I think this is where words are really important. So in my lowest times, I remember the things that I heard my earthly father say, and that was, you can do anything. You can do everything with Christ. And so many times I would think that was kind of goofy when I was growing up. I think that is an answer, you know, but he really inspired. I mean, he, by his words, all of my life, he inspired and just injected them in my spirit. So I really appreciated that. But I didn't realize that other people didn't grow up like that. So I was thinking, you know, golly, everybody talks nice to each other. Everybody encourages each other. And it wasn't really until I got into the workforce. I went on to become a trauma nurse. I was a nurse for 22 years. And I was, I had a heart, you know, for people to to help people. I just loved people. And I would say once I got in that field, I looked to the right I looked to the left, and I went, golly, nurses eat their young. I mean, it was really an interesting journey for me. And the space, many times in medicine, is very toxic. And I wasn't expecting that at all. So I always strive for more. I tried to bring, you know, communities together, whether it be the hospital and the community and so on. Um, But I also saw the damage and some of the challenges that people were encountering. As medicine continued to grow and pharmaceuticals, started, we call pharmacopoeia, started to grow. We started to see a lot. started to see a lot of people that weren't any more healthier than before they went on medications. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I took a step back and I said, you know, do I want to continue to do this for the rest of my life? And I... So let's... So I always like to stop the video, like we're taking a commercial break, and go back. So at that point, so what year, what age were you when you started into the, into trauma nursing? 21. So 21 years old, so not the last, let's say, five years here with what's going on now. But what were some of the s- signs and things you started to see? So is the, remember, we weren't there. Yeah. So yeah. what things did you see that seemed uncomfortable and you questioned? Very systematic. So, go you know, go it became, deeper. Yeah, it became that, you know, it used to be we would have one patient, maybe three, two or three patients per nurse. Then it became that we had nine, ten patients per nurse. It's very difficult to take proper care of a patient when you have so many. And in addition to that, we did, they loaded more and more, you know, work, paperwork on us, documents and so on that we had to always keep moving the pencil rather than being at the side of the patient. So what did, so when you saw that, how did it affect you personally and physically? I felt like I let my patients down. And it felt like the the harder I tried, I was never going to be, I believe in my spirit, the nurse that they were expecting me to be. Because okay, so I wanted to be the nurse at the bedside. So I'm going to go deeper with you, if you don't mind. Deep yeah. dive. I love to deep dive. Um, I personally happen to be recovered from eating disorders. Okay. And I've gone to treatment five times. Okay. For mm-hmm. treatment. So I've had the best of the best of uh, of dietitians, therapists, and teams. So I know a lot about eating disorders. I also know a very, very close person who's been institutionalized at least 10 times 
for her eating disorder as a result of being a nurse. And her story was pertained to how little time, if any, the hospitals give the doctors and nursing staff to take breaks to nutritionally eat. So let's go smaller for you. So you're working in the hospitals and trying to care for larger and larger loads of patients. How were you caring for yourself? I wasn't. I was also in that space where a lot of women find themselves. I was raising at that time three children. I was training for a marathon. I was drinking three and four pots of coffee a day. I was working double shifts. And I had an aha moment when I ended up with uh, cardiomyopathy, okay. which was my, you know, it was a big awakening for me. And I thought, what am I going to do? And you know what? They told me that I was never going to get any better. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm going to get better. So that's when I really started studying nutrition and went into the alternative health field. But I wanted to say something when you were mentioning eating disorders. Mm -hmm. My best friend, who is a fellow nurse who worked together in ICU, her name was Mary, um, she died on my watch mm -hmm. of an eating disorder. Yeah. And I will say that probably was the most frustrating thing for me because I couldn't love her better. I couldn't help her better. Mm -hmm. It was something that I, could, I couldn't reach her. So I started you know, really studying eating disorders. And I developed a, actually a program for the school called, called The Best Me. Now, this is interesting. When I would go to teach the schools about eating disorders and, and body image, and I would start from kindergarten all the way up to K, mm -hmm. and I would talk to the kindergartners, I would say, how many of you see yourself as beautiful and perfect? Did you know almost no hands went up? That's kindergarten, mind mm -hmm. you. Then I would say, how many of you have ever been called fat? How many of you have an image of, and almost every single person in the room would raise their hands. And you know what, next question, because this is where I saw it, especially in the hospital environment. How many of you wake up every morning and have a nutritional breakfast that has some protein, and protein looks like this. It might be an egg or some turkey bacon and... Uh, and some fresh fruit or vegetables for breakfast. How many do that? And then how many people then have a nutritional lunch right. and then a nutritional dinner? And how many of you then, in between that, might take a nutritional snack to, to school with you mm -hmm. of something that will keep you energized through the mm -hmm. day? And I would guess that not one student in the class would say yes to all that because... You know, the one thing, if anything I remember learning in treatment, is that we must have our first meal of the day within one hour of rising with protein and vegetables. And the second meal must be, the net, the, all the meals throughout the day can never go past 4.5 hours so your insulin, glucose, and um, cortisol levels don't spike. Mm -hmm. And I want to say there's not probably one nurse or one doctor in a hospital that follows that suit, and yet they're caring for patients that are sick, and they're not caring for themselves. Mm -hmm. So how does that relate to you for 22 years? Yeah, that was very, very common. We would miss breaks, especially in ICU and ER. You know, we'd miss breaks. We wouldn't get um, lunches. We'd have to work overtime. Um, that pressure was very great. We were taught very seldom in the medical field are you taught to nurse, care for yourself, physician, care for yourself. You were a servant. And because I have a servant's heart, that's what I did. But I will say on another level, I, I almost emptied myself out, not only with my children, but taking care of patients all the time and never meeting the standard of care on paper for the administration. I think that was really hard. And I think today, I mean, I can't even imagine today what it is like. But I am sure that it's even much worse today. The expectations on nurses and doctors are horrific. Well, you'll laugh when I, I had a really bad car accident, had to have a couple of multi surgeries. And I remember going in for my, my knee replacement, my first, and when and I was the first patient of the day. And when the orthopedic walked in, you know, to talk to me before going under anesthesia, I said to him, I said, Did you have breakfast yet? And he goes, I had my coffee. I said, No. It's going to take 20 minutes before I go under. Could you go get some protein in your body so that you, your, because your brain can't turn on in the morning without protein? Mm -hmm. And I said, you're not going to operate on me. I said, 
do I need to buy you an omelet right now? Because I want you <laughs> you to be nutritionally fed before you start doing surgery on me. He, he looked, I said, I'm not joking with you. Would you go get breakfast? That's amazing. And isn't That's that, amazing. I wanted him to have his brain turned on. Mm-hmm. I will say the, the cans of Red Bull <laughs> that I would take off the physicians mm-hmm. when they would go to do charting and do their, their charts, it would fill up garbage cans. Red Bull, mm. Pepsi's, Cokes, you know, all the sodas, and pots of coffee. And you wonder how in the world can they keep their hands stable I don't know. with all that sh- uh, sugar in it. And, uh, anyway, so, so 22 years nursing, mm-hmm. your body's falling apart, you're stressed mm-hmm. out, mm-hmm. you're trying to be, were, are you, were you a single mom at that time? You said no. you had three kids yet? No. Yeah, but you're still kids. trying yep. To, yep. to do all these bouncing balls. Because the expectations were horrific. They mm-hmm. had to be a certain size. They had to make sure that I exercised, make sure I had a perfect house. And where those came okay. from, mm-hmm. to this day, I don't have any idea. Because I don't remember anybody telling me, you have to have a perfect house. Your kids can have dirt on their knees. I had three boys. And now you're going to be complete. So Come let's on. go back on your story there with, uh, with landing the plane. Mm-hmm. So you started off with a perfect family. Per, did, did you catch that? And I had a great family, yeah, for but sure. No, no, I'm going to go back to the word. Perfect. Yeah. You went back, to, started off with a perfect family. Mm-hmm. So do you, and, and this is never about let's, let's blame and shame no. parents, but do you think there may be some connecting dots there that you saw the way mom was the perfect mom and cared for you and made sure you were clean and fed and yes. blah, blah, blah. Oh, yes. And then your dad was the perfect dad. Mm-hmm. And so do you feel like that had some indications that when that perfection came in, mm-hmm. that you thought you had to repeat that in your own life? Absolutely. I never wanted to let them down mm. because I thought, geez, you know, they're so good to me. I've, I've been raised so well. And I would sometimes try to think, you know, when other people would talk about their childhood, I think, well, I don't know what to tell you, but mine was pretty good. But it, there is pressure on any level that you have to perform mm-hmm. on, to meet ex- people's expectations if you love and care about people. If you yeah. don't care, it's easy, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, you know, people don't understand that burden of perfectionism manifests into then the other burden of I'm just not good enough. Mm-hmm. I no matter Absolutely. what I do, I am just not good Absolutely. enough. Absolutely. And then what burden comes in? Total disdain. Yeah. And and yeah. Distra- distress, mm-hmm. and then anxiety, mm-hmm. and then depression, and mm-hmm. it just spirals. And it's all from one burden. It's like you connect one dot to yep. the next to the yep. next, and you're like, oh my gosh, where did all this manifest? Yeah. Yep. And and you know I I love Mary the fact that you know sometimes. We, when we're growing up in the codependent looking good family, mm-hmm. it looks good, it smells good, but is it really that good? Mm-hmm. Like, it, mm-hmm. is it really? You know, and I, you know, I don't, is your mom and dad still alive? My dad died 13 years ago with brain, tam- brain tumor. Mm-hmm. My mom's still living, she's 84, she's feisty, wonderful. Yeah. It might be, it might be fascinating when you go back home to talk to mom and just say, you know, mom, when you were like that perfect mom, did you ever feel stress? You know? Oh, I am sure. Yeah. Yes. With my dad. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Back in the day when they ironed underwear. And oh, yeah, ironed yeah. Ironed nap- sheets. And, oh, my oh, yeah. goodness. Yeah, That's and he had to have the, ta- the, oh, the, yes. the food on the table the moment they walked in the door. Yeah, and the starch collars. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's yeah. how it was. Wow. And so how old are the kids today? Uh, my oldest would be 42. Mm-hmm. Uh, 39. 34, three boys, and then my daughter's 29. And are there grandbabies? Not yet. I have grand dogs. Grand dogs. <laughs> <laughs> my grand. daughter just got married, so that was really awesome. Wow. So then did the heart situation that you had, was that the final straw that had you quit your job, or are you still there? Are you still I, nursing? <laughs> no. I took some time and really reconsidered my course, and I got myself healthy. Okay. And then it was a couple years later that I left nursing totally. And And how long ago was that? It'll be 17 years. And so what have you been doing for 17 years? 
17 years. So I went into the alternative health field. Okay. And then I started to study nutritional components, started to develop products for companies, mm -hmm. and then discovered that you can have the best product in the world, <coughs> but if you don't have a marketing, nobody knows about you. Mm -hmm. Just like your podcast. You know, people need to know about it. Okay. So I developed a media marketing company as well as a product development company. And, and so are you staying in balance now? I try. But you know it's what really fun. helps? I will say something. Mm -hmm. This event we just did, being with people that are like-minded, it's a lo they're long days, Rachel. I mean, you're just mm -hmm. pooped <laughs> by the end mm -hmm. of the days. But you leave with there's a different to, to fire in your belly. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't feel like you were drudgedly doing something that you didn't want to do for two days. Yeah. And I'm finding that the more that I pull those people into my life. And the other thing that I have learned is toxic people don't have any room. I don't have any room in the inn. And, but it takes a while to figure out if they're toxic or not. And I think, you know, in an environment like this as well, um, and tell me if you wouldn't agree, I think you start to connect with new friendships. And for me anyway, I'm, I, yes. I, I think this is a great um, venue to get lots of people, when I say lots, because I don't like the word lots, to get people in your cell phone to say, hey, you know what, Lisa? Can I call you once in a while and do a check-in? Yes, and like, let's do check-ins yes. with, in fact, when the tour ends, I really want to start back up. When I started the Connection Show, I started doing, I used to do them weekly, and then it went to bi and then it went to monthly, and now I haven't done it for about six months. I did Connection Circles, and I would send out a, a Zoom link nice. uh, via email and just say, hey, on Thursday night at 6 o'clock Central Time, let's do an hour to an hour and a half zoom connection and i i told everyone i don't want to be where we're sitting talking about our jobs like let's just get on and even like do some improv mm -hmm. comedy like mm -hmm. just let's connect so i think it would be fun to read that is that. so important right now with not only the the digital communication that people are using um let me just share a study with you because yeah. i'm half my brain is is very study orientated the other half is uh, creative marketing um, there's a gentleman that has a show I has want you a, to talk into here oops, so they that has you. an organization or a foundation and he does brain mapping mm. and so I stay in touch with him because for marketing you need to know the brain is operating for if you're hitting the target or not so I talked to him about three weeks ago and I said his name is Dr. Porter and I said tell me what's going on with the brains of people in you know post-COVID this is what he shared with me, which is really interesting, which will come to no surprise, I'm sure, of anybody, including yourself listening to this, is that the brains pre-COVID were totally different than the brains post-COVID. Mm -hmm. The reason is, post-COVID, he said, if I were to diagnose the patients today, a lot of them on the brain scans look like they have ADD and ADHD, mm -hmm. where they wouldn't have been like that pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. But what's happening is there's so much fear, anxiety, and distraction that people can't stay focused. And, and so that's why we have to return to connection you're circles. You're right. That's what I was just... It's connection Connection is so important. circles. And when I say connection circles, like, I remember one of them. You would love it. One day I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, oh, today, let's talk about with what our ethnicity is. Like, I'm, I'm Greek, German, Irish. And so we all got on and talked about that and said, what are some of the heritages you grew up with, like, you know, for mm. Greek or, you know? And what kind of foods did you eat in your home? And we just talked... I mean, like, who would just do a talk like that, you know? That's great, And though. we all talked, and it was like, we really connected. It was a whole different level. And, you know, I, all of these networking Zooms mm -hmm. drive me crazy. Because they're third, like, they're three-minute Zooms. Everybody tells them, oh, I'm Braveheart Workshops, I'm Event Planner, blah, 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 blah. And after, like, about six minutes of it, I'm like, I don't care, Lisa, what you do. <laughs> like... You know, what's Who your you? what's your favorite color and you know, yeah. what's on your Who bucket you? list? Yeah, I, like can we just have fun? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, do we always got to talk about what we do? I agree because you know? it defines us. Yeah. What do you do? Oh, I'm at XYZ. Like if you saw, yeah. we didn't even, I didn't even, what do you do? By the way, who are you? What do you do? Yeah. I don't know who you are, yeah. you know, yeah. but I know you now. I know that you have a heart for those that are hurting. You loved your patients. Mm -hmm. You Adore your family. You had a loving yes. family, even though they weren't perfect. <laughs> they seemed to be perfect, yeah. but they weren't. Because yeah. none of us are perfect. Yeah. None of us are. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. and that's how I'll remember you. Aww, you know, I'm not going to remember the, you know, you might, oh, Christian marketing. Maybe I'll remember. <laughs> all, that's what, you know what I mean? But yeah. do you agree? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So in closing, um, I do love to close, though, so people know how to reach you. And because I really think it's important to help each other out. Mm -hmm. And so how can people reach you if they need, I'm assuming you have a business that if someone wants Christian or non-Christian marketing, or is it just Christian marketing? Actually, my plumb line is Mm -hmm. that if you have a product, service, or tool that is going to enhance and to help the lives of people around us, and maybe they haven't heard it before, maybe it's brand new, maybe it's something that they are just thinking about, anything from conception all the way to execution, to marketing, um, I'm here to help. Okay, and, and the name I, of the company? So what I'd like to do is get everybody my personal email, okay, which is praises.blessings at Yahoo. And my, can I give my phone number? You can if okay. you'd like. So go ahead, 906-281-3855. Okay. And, and do you, you have a website? That way. Do you have a website? There's a website called silverrightglobal.com. And that's right, dot com. Okay. And I'll get that from you. And that way people can connect with you if they would like to reach out and, um, how, and just even do, do you do free consults? Oh, absolutely. An assessment, a needs assessment. So reach out to Lisa Hill and connect with her. And what city do you live in? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. Well, and do you see people now in person too in Minneapolis? Do you have an office? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Bar- brick and mortar. Yeah, brick and mortar. Mm-hmm. So if you live in the Minneapolis area, you can see Lisa in person. Of course, do a Zoom with her because you can be anywhere yes. for Zoom. Yes. And it's been just a privilege to get to know you just a little bit more, Lisa. Thank you so much, Jill. I really appreciate this. And you Thank know, you for what you're doing. And you know, in closing, because you're in marketing, and I mm-hmm. haven't been saying this all day, don't ask me why because I just didn't think about it until now, is Braveheart Workshops has decided... We want to go back to doing events. That's awesome. And we haven't for a while. We need to. Yeah, so guess what we're going to do? We're going to do a getaway for women only. I love it. To the island, my favorite island of Aruba, on November 1st through the 7th. And for those of you who are patriots, we're making sure we get home on the 7th. So we can vote on the 8th. Ah, So we make sure. And so, ladies, Go online to BraveheartWorkshops.com. Registration is open now, and we will have a blast in the sand. And and this woman's into nutrition and health and wellness. Yes. You know what we're going to do every day? Who, whoever wants to wake up, wake up, and I gotta keep getting this stupid pop-up for coming up. Whoever wants to wake up right before the sun rises, and if we go outside and sit in ground our feet in the Love sand it. and stare at the sun without sunglasses. When the sun rises, I've been told you get all the vitamin D your body needs for mm-hmm. the day. Mm-hmm. And so I am going to do I'm that. I'm so excited. I'm going to do yes, that. I'm going to get my vitamin D let's and then it. we're going to soar with some breath work and movement on the Love beach. It. Love it. All oh, right. that's fantastic. So join us, ladies. I'm excited. All right. Thank God you, bless Jill. you. God bless you. Thank you. Bye now. Well, that was so amazing to interview Lisa Hill in uh, New York. It was just a blessing to meet her. So I'd love for you guys to know how to reach out to Lisa. This is her bio and her website that we mentioned. It is silverrightglobal.com where you could reach out to Lisa now and connect with her. So as we were saying in the ending of that interview, we had talked about doing an Aruba getaway November 1st through 7th, but some things changed after interviewing there and General Flynn had indicated he was going to extend the Reawaken America tour to Branson, Missouri, and it fell during that same time. And so, um, Many of the patients reawaken America tour with General Flynn, Eric Trump, and many others. You can still get tickets by going to time to freeamerica.com. The event's going to be at the Freedom Encounter Theater. So um, tickets are still available. You can go online and order those now. And Lisa will be here 
for that event. So the one we were talking about, the Aruba we were talking about has been paused. We did add another date on, which was going to be October 26th to November 1st. There are just one or two spots left for that. So if anybody still wants to go to that, you can go to braveheartworkshops.com and you can register. But please call me first to make sure there's a spot for that. But if you don't get in for the October 26th to November 1st Aruba Getaway, we've added another one, which will be on February the 11th, excuse me, February the 5th through the 11th in Aruba. And that one is going to look a little bit different. It's going to be for men and women. So men can come, women can come, couples can come for amazing way to Aruba um, at this beautiful villa that I found. I have these villas in Aruba. However, if you want to do February, please, I'm asking you quickly to go on to the website, braveheartworkshops.com, put a deposit down if you can immediately so that you'll get a space because February is going to fill up so fast. You can make up to three payments. So all you have to do is just go online, talk to me. We can get your deposit to hold your spot and then I can help you with payments on that. It's very affordable anyway. You can pay in full, but don't procrastinate and wait else you won't get in for that. So I'm going to play a closing video about Aruba and then end for today. So thank you so much for listening in and learning more about the amazing Lisa Hill. Thanks for joining us on The Connection Show. And we'll see you in Aruba for some fun, laughter, and play. Have a wonderful day. Join us for the hope, health, and healing Aruba Connections Getaway for men and women, February 5th through the 11th, 2023. Are you overworked, stressed out, feeling exhausted? Is it time to spoil yourself, breathe in life, and relax at private villas? in Aruba for six nights and seven days. Renew your mind and body. Discover greater self-awareness. Join in connection, wellness, stillness, movement, enhance inner peace. Experience amazing beaches. Enjoy snorkeling, area attractions, shopping till you drop. Dine at fabulous beachfront restaurants. Imagine releasing anxiety, reconnect with yourself, restore your soul, bring your friends. Enjoy fresh and savory cooked meals lasting memories. Join us now. Register today. Book your flight and get away to Aruba February 5th through the 11th, 2023. Register by going to braveheartworkshops.com. Pack now and see you on the island of Aruba. Amari Global is the mental wellness company. In 2018, Amari won the Nutri Award for the world's first award-winning gut brain access nutrition system for their flagship product, the Fundamentals Pack. Clinically proven to increase good bacteria in the gut and incredible benefits. Amari means love and there is love in every bottle. Mental Health Matters in Amari is the mental wellness company. Prepare your body's gut microbiome for optimized mental wellness with a reboot 
and get yourself back to feeling joyful and motivated with mood. Round out your daily nutrition with GBX Food Systems. Crush your daily to-do list each day with EDGE. Support your digestion and immune system with digestive, probiotics, omega, and Vita GBX supplements. Fuel your mental edge with our mental fitness pack. Feel like your best self with the Happy Hormone Pack. Unlock your brain's potential with happy neurons with the Happy Mind Pack. And combine these products for an ultimate day with the Happy Juice Pack. For weight loss and energy, order the Transformational Pack. Our Kids Pack is the first comprehensive mental wellness pack for kids and teens. For a complete mind and body nutrition system, get your kids these today. Begin your wellness journey with Amari Starter Pack and save. Start with the Entrepreneur Pack if you're serious about making an impact on your mental, physical, and financial wellness. Launch your Amari business with all our top products, packs, offers, and save. Help others achieve overall wellness too and gain financial wellness. Become a mental wellness partner today. Shop now and save. Sign up today by going to our website listed on this page. Thanks for joining us today on The Connection Show, where we bring you stories that will transform your life. The Connection Show would appreciate your support. Please go to either our Patreon page or our PayPal Me Now link today. We love our podcast show guests and appreciate our listeners and YouTube subscribers. Please go to our YouTube channel called the Connection Show and Braveheart Workshops, and subscribe now. Remember to click the gray bell in the All tab so you don't miss any upcoming episodes.